is the fastest and easiest way to do a split screen without ever having to adjust pixel by pixel. Yeah, yeah, Mary, and this channel I help you detect tools to be creative. So let's do it. All right, we're live here on the big cam, and the first thing we gotta do is install DaVinci Resolve. Just use the link in the description. I'll be sure to take it easy if you're not very familiar with the software yet, and you can just get the free version. You're gonna reach this screen in which you can just click new project, and then I'm just gonna put YouTube. And down here, you have the buttons for you to access the different pages. You just go to the edit page, and basically what you're gonna see is in the left, you have the media pool and the effects, and down here is the timeline. So let's just drag and drop our files inside here. To drag and drop, there is a trick. You can just grab whatever folder you want, and if you drag and drop it over master over here, you're gonna see that it respects the folder structure and creates the folder called drone, and below all the files are here. Now, you see that there's already a timeline over here, and if I drag and drop something, you're gonna be able to see the preview over here, and it shows that it's horizontal because it's my standard configuration. But for this case, I'm gonna create a vertical one. So I'm just gonna come up here to master, right click, Timelines, create new timeline or control command N. And I'm just gonna name it something like five in one. Now, if I leave use project settings clicked, it means that it's gonna use the standard ones that I have configured. Instead, I'm going to unclick it, go to format. And here I'm gonna click use vertical resolution. And I'm going to choose 1080 by 1920. And one more thing you have to choose over here is change this to center crop with no resizing. And to follow this tutorial, it's gonna be easier, but you can choose later which one you prefer. But if your plan is to do something horizontal, don't worry, you can choose the resolution you prefer here right now, and you're gonna understand very clearly in the next steps what you need to adapt to make it into columns instead of rows like in social media. Let's go back. Okay, now you can see the preview is already vertical, and if I go here to drone files and I drop whatever on the screen, you're gonna see that it's already there. And as I chose center with no resizing, you can see that it's simply positioned right in the middle here, and you're just seeing that window of content over there. Okay, for this example, I'm just gonna keep around 15 seconds more or less of video for each one. And if you're new to selecting DaVinci, you can just scroll your mouse over the videos and it's gonna show you what the video is about. In this case, I'm gonna grab this one, for example, here. And to do it, I can double click and it's going to appear in this panel over here so that I can preview it before throwing in the timeline. If you don't see this one, you're only seeing timeline preview, you can click up here in this button and then it's gonna alternate between both of them. Okay, once here, I'm gonna grab this point and I'm gonna press I to set an in point and until here is fine, O to set an out point. And I set myself a shortcut with P to throw it on the timeline, but this is not standard. So you can also add it in the keyboard customization later if you want. Otherwise, drag and drop like this. And I'm just gonna make the tracks a little bit bigger so that we can see the preview and understand which clip is which here in the tracks. Now I'll just repeat this process with three other clips so that we have five of them. Okay, so now as me, if you're seeing this here a little bit small, you can click up here to fit on screen or just press Z on the keyboard. All right, so now we got all the videos stacked on top of each other and some are bigger than others. So I'm just going to cut everything in this point here. So I'm just gonna change to the trim mode by using this shortcut T and then press W and it's going to cut everything else that I have in front of the playhead. Quick tip if you're coming from Final Cut or Premiere Pro, in DaVinci Resolve, in the keyboard customization, you can set the shortcuts to be exactly as those softwares. So especially if you're starting out right now, you can make it easier a little bit so that you already know where you're going. Now, if you wanna mess with the size of the timeline, you can use this slider over here or just press Shift Z and it's going to expand for you to see everything you have over there. Okay, so now we have five clips on top of each other, but they are covering each other. So you can only see the one on the top. And by the way, the order here doesn't really matter for the final result, but it's gonna be easier for you to understand what you're dealing with if you already put them in the order that you wanna stack them. Now here comes the real trick. You're gonna come up here. We don't need the media pool anymore, so I'm just gonna close it and I'm gonna open the effects tab. And now here you can just search for video collage. And the search on the effects tab affects only what you're selected here. So you're gonna come down to open effects and now you can see video collage. Just drag and drop it to the first clip here you see on the top. And now it's applied only to this one. Okay, so now here on the right, you're gonna be able to see the inspector. If you don't see it, you can click up here and it's going to open it for you. 
This is where you change all the parameters of each video clip you have on the timeline. It can be the position, the cropping, the opacity, all this kind of stuff, and also the effects. So up here on the effects part, you're gonna be able to find the video collage effect that you just added to the clip. And there are two parts of it. One is the globals, in which you're gonna set all the global parameters for the video collage you wanna do, and then tiles, which is gonna set the parameters for each one of them. So we begin with the globals, and here you can see the first thing is the most important one, in which you're gonna set how many columns and how many rows you want for this collage. So in this case here, I'm gonna use one column and five rows to make that five split screen for social. There's a limit of five though. And first thing to do and to understand better what is it doing, I would click here in preview layout. So it's gonna show you that the tiles are numbered from one to five and they have the separation between them, they have a gap between the borders and all of these you can change over here. So let's just go quickly through some settings that you can change so that you know what you can do. So you can, for example, unbalance this stack by moving it horizontally like this and if you wanna reset whatever you did, you can just double click the name of the parameter over here. Margins and spacing, it's what you're thinking. It's just gonna change how much margin you're gonna get on the left and right, on the top and bottom. You can move it horizontally or vertically. And these two here are the ones that are really gonna change how it looks on the screen because it's gonna tell how much space on the horizontal part and in between them you're gonna have. So if you just want them to be all connected with each other, you just pull this one here down to zero and it's gonna look like that. I'm gonna leave a very small gap. So like this is looking cool, I'm gonna leave it like this. Now one parameter that I skipped and you probably noticed is the rounding over here. Because not only it's causing the borders to be rounded like this, but also if you go to an extreme, this is gonna transform all the rectangles into circles. So you have another shape to play with also if you'd like. In my case, I'm just gonna leave the rounding very, very small just for the corners not to be sharp and I'm satisfied with that. Okay, so for global parameters, we're good to go. Let's go to tiles. So as you can see right now from the pattern, we have tile one selected. So all we need to do is change here in the menu from create background to create tile. And now if I deactivate preview layout, you're gonna see that the first clip we got is already only here in the first tile and the other ones disappeared because we haven't added them yet. Now probably something that is making you nervous and makes me also is that we cannot see anything from this over here because the clip is just too large for the size of the tile. So let's just come back here to the video part and zoom out a little bit. And for that, you can just click over the number and just drag it to the left so that it zooms out a little bit and oh, it's already looking way, way better than it was before. So I'll just leave it as it is and I'm gonna come back here to the effects and let's finish configuring these tiles. The idea is we're gonna finish configuring exactly how we want these to look and then we're gonna copy all these base settings that we do for one tile over to the other files and then they're gonna occupy tiles two, three, four and five. So let's go through the settings together but first let me show you an example. This video is not sponsored, but if you want to learn a little bit more about video production and editing on DaVinci, you can check out my free course on Skillshare. There you're going to learn all the basics for a high-level home production. If you use the link in the description, you're going to get one month completely for free. And then you can watch my course, which is what I hope you're going to do, but you can also watch many other very cool YouTubers' courses like Ali Abdal, Marquez Brownlee. And like this, you guys are going to be helping me get some extra cappuccinos and film some more videos for you all. So enough with the interruption, link in the description, back to the video. Okay, so just to make things a little bit more visible, I'm gonna drag these files up and I'm just going to add one element down here just to fill the screen on the back, like to have a background. And let's see what we have as options over here. So if you wanted one of the tiles not to appear, you could just mute it over here. If you wanna do a custom size or shape, now on resize content, you're gonna see some controls that looks just like what you have on the video part. Take a look at this. If you pan the video, for example, to the right over here, it looks like it just moved in the X axis. But if you come to edge behavior and instead of transparent, you put reflect, now you have that edge reflected over there. So if you actually shot it in a shape that doesn't fit really well the shape of the collage that you wanna do, you could use this to complete the screen with something else. And if this is passing fast and it's one of five styles, it's very difficult for someone to notice the trick over there. In tile styling, you can actually add a border to these ones. So in this case, for example, it's already set to yellow, but you could set it to whatever you prefer. Like for example, just this color like this. I'm gonna put okay. And it can be total opacity, or it can be just something much more subtle like this, for example. I don't think I'm a very big fan of this style, but anyways, you could do it. 
For the moment, I'm just going to reset it by double clicking tile border to zero and I'm gonna close this one over here, this one also. Now drop shadows, I usually quite like. And in this case here, let me just make it very strong so that we know what we are doing and looks like the distance is very big. I'm just gonna make it a little bit shorter. Always the same way that you deal with the parameters here is by passing the mouse on top. You see that it's gonna transform into this double-sided arrow and then you just click and you scroll to the left or to the right and you're gonna change that parameter very slowly. Or if you remember the exact number you liked, you can just type it in also. I quite like it like this. And notice that most of these parameters have this apply to all tiles box checked meaning that I'm gonna change for all of them at the same time. If you uncheck this, you're gonna be able to change just for the style and you're gonna have to redo it for each one of them. Now, tile animation is something pretty cool. You could manually keyframe everything or you could just do like, for example, an intro only in which you choose, let's go by order here. Let's put fly first. And if I just play this, you're gonna see that this slides into position and it was quite slow but not bad, but I maybe would like it to be a little bit faster. And that you change here in the duration. Right now it's for 60 frames. I'm just gonna put it much lower. I don't know, 15 for example. Let's try. Let's play it. Very cool. If you don't like the flying effect, you could make it shrink. So it just pops into position like that. There's also the rotate, which I think should be forbidden. And there's also the fade, which is quite cool also, and it just fades into position, especially if the film burn on the bottom. Maybe I would even choose this one. Let's see again. Pretty cool. Okay, maybe I'll leave this one. But for the sake of the next example, it's gonna be more clear if I use the fly. So let me just confirm that it's working again. Okay, it is. Now in the easing and blur of all tiles, you have these much more professionally looking options. So instead of doing a linear motion, like entering the screen with a certain speed and just keeping it until it stops, or you can use easing, which is starting a little bit faster and slowing down like it was a car, for example. So I'm just gonna put in and out because if we decide to do also the out transition, it's gonna do the same. And now if we try it, you're gonna see that it enters a little bit faster and it slows down. Let me show that again, that's it. So it looks much more professional this way. And you can change the ease amount over here. So if I make it much, much stronger, let's see. See, like it really, really begins fast. Seems like that there's a little bit of resistance in the beginning and, and then it accelerates and stops. And if I make it way, way lower, it just seems more or less like the linear one. So I'm just gonna leave it at half, okay. And now I'm gonna set the motion blur also. And this is gonna completely change how it looks. Because if I make it quite strong like this, for example, all right. So it seems like nothing changed at first, but if I stop it, take a look at this. So when it's in motion, it's actually blurry. Like it's been shot at one over 50, for example, and this is really in motion. So it looks much more professional. And the cool thing is that while it progresses, the blur reduces, meaning that it's stopping down and, until it's completely still over here. So let's see that again. Perfect, very cool. Now I'm pretty happy with how we set everything up over here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy all of the settings to the other video clips so that they also make part of this video collage. The only thing I'm gonna have to change is that each one of them has to be on a different tile. So I'm just gonna go over here. I'm gonna make you see all of them by out clicking and I'm just going to go right click. I'm gonna choose copy or you can do control or command C. I'm going to select all four of them, but not the film burn on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go out V, or you can also right click and go to paste attributes. So here you're gonna choose what you wanna copy from that first one. And to just copy the video collage, you just need to select plugins. Now, if you did some color correction, retiming, or something that makes sense to copy to the other ones, you can also click them over here. In this case, I'm not gonna do it because it won't make sense. Each one will have a different position or zoom. So I'm just gonna leave plugins only, apply it, and that's it. Now you're gonna see that everything disappeared. You don't see the other videos anymore and there's only the tile one. And this is because every one of them now is set to tile one also. So they are all below each other. For example, if I just disable this video track over here, you're gonna be able to see the one that is below. So let's fix this by going here to the second one, effects, here's tiles and active tile, we're gonna change it to two. Okay, so now we have it there. Let's repeat the same thing for the other ones. This is gonna be tile three, this is gonna be tile four, and this is gonna be tile five. Okay, so now let's adjust this a little bit. Okay, this looks good like this. This one. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose playback, render cache, smart. 
so that we can see everything and all the effects in real time. It's gonna render the timeline, and this is what it looks like in the end. Another thing to notice is that most of the parameters over here are keyframeable. Is this even a verb? Anyways, you can change them according to time. So for example, if I just want to make the content on the tile number one to change its size a long time, or just tilt it or pan it, like for example, this first one here, seems like that after the two people pass, I could totally move it upward so that I don't miss the tip of the mountains over there on the back. So what I could do would be to here set a keyframe. So for example, on tilt, I can just click here on this diamond icon. It's gonna set the first keyframe. And then with time, I can just make it, let's go forward a little bit. I can make it tilt up a little bit, like for example, here. So with time, this is just going to go up slowly, slowly. And it seems like that there is a camera movement, almost unnoticeable but it looks much nicer like this. And you can do this with other stuff also. Even with the rounding, for example, if you wanted this to suddenly transform itself with time into a circle. So it would look something kind of like this. So anyways, I don't want it, but it's possible. So there's one final touch that I wanna give. I don't want all the videos to be coming into the screen at the same time. And now let's see how this looks like. All right, this is looking very, very cool. End of the timeline where I want it to stop. I'm gonna press T to go into trim mode and W to cut all of the rest. And that's it. I'm just gonna click O to set the out point. Here in the beginning, I to set the in point. It's saved and this is done to be published. One thing's for certain, you'll never do again a split screen by adjusting everything pixel by pixel. If you create something for social media using this trick, please tag me at FlyHenry so that I can see what you've created. And if you have any doubts or you wanna see some more DaVinci Resolve tutorials on the channel, let me know in the comment section below. Now you can go watch this video over here in which I teach you all about CapCut for desktop, which is also a very cool video editing software. All right guys, enough for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you over there. Ciao.